Welcome back to another video of Released Fishing. Today we are going over our top five steelhead tactics for the fall run. Our first tactic is to watch, watch the charts and play their in. Uh, it's something that anybody can do. Um, get on the internet, search your area. If you're going to be fishing uh, Lake Erie, for example, there's uh, flow charts you can get on. Yep. You can see the discharges. That's something that I check daily, even though I live 20 minutes from um, the streams that I'm going to be fishing. There's also live webcams such as Uncle John's that provide live feed of what the water looks like. If you have a good idea of how to read the flow charts and uh, how much water is actually coming out of the stream, uh, you know, it might save you a trip or it might lead you to the best steelhead trip yeah. of your season. All so right. our second tactic is off of what Tyler was saying. If you do end up coming up here and the streams are low and clear, um, your best bet is to go light with your line. Wait. I mean, I met this, uh, you know, I met this guy on the stream. His name's Bubba. He's this old fly fisherman and um, he fished Alaska pretty much all of his life. You know, he's been through it all. And the best advice he gave to me last year was these guys, he said, these guys don't even know what they're doing. He's like, I'm throwing 6X tippet at these fish. That's how low the, f you know, low and clear the streams were. And he was the only one hooking up the fish. Um, so Steelhead are not stupid. You know, they yeah. see that stuff. And don't be afraid to lighten up. I mean, don't be afraid to lighten up because you might break. Uh, you know, you might break two fish, but you might get the third one in. Um, it's something that I had to learn the hard way and you'll definitely see a bigger increase in your um, How many bites you guys, you know, how many hits you guys are getting how many fish you're picking up if you lighten up your line If the conditions are low and clear. All right number three we are going to talk about um, What is one of my favorite techniques and I think hunters as well and that is pagan beads Pagan beads. It's a great way to fish um, you know, pig bead above your fly, you, you know, uh, pig and beads is a good way, you know, to always pick up fish. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so here's the beads. So I know this tactic is used, what, this started in Alaska, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pig and beads. Beads started primarily, I guess, in Alaska. That's, I guess, where it originates from. We have a bunch of variations of these eggs because they go through like a life cycle there's an egg life cycle the beads cover the egg life cycle right. they float better in the water column than most egg patterns and they look right. more realistic you'll definitely see an increase in your amount of hookups if you start you know making small. beads above your fly you have to go you know go small six to eight mil is uh the go-to i think right. 10's a little too big um you know just mm -hmm. try to match that match the hatch the best you can the hatch is the eggs that are floating in the water column so if you can yeah. you know find the eggs you know match it um you know it definitely helps to have beads in your box and you know that might catch you four fish right. instead of two steelhead so, are not just hitting anything you know they're they're smart you know they're picky and especially around this time of the year when tons and tons and tons of anglers are piling in the streams and they have their spinning rods with treble hooks and they're whipping out skein and these fish see hunks and hunks and hunks and hunks and hunks of bait just float by their face all day long. You put on a little tiny bead. Something that looks so natural and real in the water column. Deadly. You'll see. For sure. Definitely a fish is gonna come by, pick it up. And you know, you can put, I peg a lot of beads. You know, if I'm having a rough day in the water, I'll peg a bead above my fly, you know, above mm. an egg pattern because that egg pattern gives that wet, different look in the water. And then mm. you're covering different principles of presentation in the water if you have your bead and you have that pegged above an egg pattern or a stone fly. Stone fly yeah. You know, bead and stone fly is definitely a good combo for steelhead, and you'll see. Definitely an increase in your hookups Absolutely. if you use those tactics. All right, so number four kind of piggybacks off of what we talked about, the fishermen uh, throwing in a bunch of bait. You want to avoid crowds. So it's really hard to do, and it's almost impossible for those early runs when the fish are only in a small stretch of area. But there is a way to tackle that um, that doesn't involve standing shoulder to shoulder and being miserable while you fish. If you want to wait till the season progresses, you can do that. But there's also good ways of avoiding being in that combat zone of fishing. Yeah, and you know, look around you, see what's going on, and hike up or down. If you know the crowd's there, it's because they're probably on a pot of fish. Right. But if you'll see, if you hike above that crowd, many times I've done this, and those fast, shallow runs where people avoid, you'll right. see three or four fish just 
you know, that's been in there all day and they haven't seen a fly or anything yet. And if you get on there, you use good techniques, you, you know, you use your stealth, you come up on them, give a good presentation, you'll definitely hook up to those fish. And if you keep hiking up, you'll never know what you'll find. There's many times Absolutely. that I've wiped up, you know, walked a mile and a half up to the, you know, the stream and found a honey hole that no one ever wanted to walk up to. And, yep. you know, I've had my best days on those places. So, you know, see the crowds, see where the fish are at, you know, be smart about what you're doing and look at your surroundings and move away from them. Yeah. And for our fifth and final tactic is something that, um, you know, it's just through a lot of fishing and trial and error that we've learned too, is a lot of, you know, guys that's come up steelhead for the first time, they think, you know, you've got to use these egg patterns or you got to use this big hunk of meat, big woolly bugger stripping. Big hooks, big, big hook, line. You know, size six, eight. But in right. reality, you know, I found the smaller you go, the better your odds. If you, you know, Absolutely. use size 12, 14, nymphin, um, small steelhead nymph, small eggs, especially size 14, 16 eggs. I mean, right. those patterns will catch more fish than you can oh, yeah. believe. So Absolutely. go small, lighten up your line, and you'll definitely have more hookups on your fall run steelhead trip. For sure. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today. Um, I hope you picked up a little bit about something that you didn't already know. Um, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this, and we will have a bunch of videos coming out in the future. And. Uh, Check out the description below. We'll have linked our um, our ways of rigging, our favorite steelhead tactics, such as beads, stone flies. You know some of our tricks that we use on the steelhead um, in our fall run season. Um, so go give that a check out. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>